For the best liberty-oriented talk 24-7, visit lrn.fm. I keep meeting to remind myself that I'm probably focusing too much on people who are attention whores like me and I should speak a little more to the efforts of the, the unsung heroes some of which I don't even know what they're doing because they're so unsung but uh, a good example of activism I think is sort of a step above what Sam was doing is the uh, drudgerous task of bill reading the New Hampshire State House is sort of like the tip of, of our spear in government circles. That's where we've had the most inroads. And I tend to be a believer in that old Soviet doctrine that you reinforce success, you don't reinforce failure uh, in a military sense, or in our case, in a, in a peaceable conflict sense. I read a couple of bills, you know, reviewed them uh, for the New Hampshire Liberty Alliance uh, and decided that was not for me. Uh, now, though, I think uh, you know almost every bill that comes before the state house gets read and reviewed by a Liberty Alliance member, and those fo- folks don't get the glory like us YouTube jockeys. Better still uh, would be the folks who run for office, whether they're free staters or whether they already lived here and believed in freedom. That is a really efficient piece of activism because it only costs two bucks and. You know, in some cases, people don't really even put any effort into it, and they still win. That's talking about running for state house, really efficient, depending on where you are, what the circumstances are. Uh, assuming that you can do that, it's probably better to do that than than running for local office, because again, it's just much more difficult to get into a local office in many cases than it is to get into the state house. And ultimately, if we can get into a position where we regularly prevail at the state house. There's just a lot more power there than, the, than there is at the local level. A freedom-oriented House of Representatives in New Hampshire could, actually, I guess I should call it the General Court, uh, freedom-oriented General Court could simply repeal uh, legislation that gives towns their authority to hurt people. That's the kind of thing that would help flush authoritarians out into the open. It would hit on hit on that cylinder as well as the efficiency, the in New Hampshire, and the uh, gets attention cylinders. Somewhere in here, I guess I have to give a tip of the hat to folks who have bills submitted. Uh, I've done that a couple times myself. However, I tell you what, it it made me feel dirty. I don't know if I'm going to ever have one submitted again, just because it uh, it supposedly costs a little bit of money for them to hear and then reject a bill. Certainly, I wouldn't uh, try to have a bill submitted in the future that... uh, Adds text to le- le- uh, to the uh, law. I would I would only support. I mean, I can really uh, basically you, you want a, a bill to repeal a law rather than creating a new one. But I do have to admit, when you get a bill submitted, especially if it gets attention, it can be a very efficient way to uh, either create change or create a debate. But again, whatever you're doing, you want to try and add as many cylinders to it. You know, if you just submit a bill, it might or might not get attention. But if you take the follow-on steps of organizing demonstrations or letters to the editor, YouTube videos, and so forth, then if you can even get press, you can change the debate. Someone who did both a State House run and textbook civil disobedience was Andrew Carroll out in Keene. Actually, I'm not sure he lived there, but he chose that location to. Uh, openly possess marijuana after informing the authorities that's what he was going to do. So Andrew pretty much hit on the efficiency cylinder, the attention getting cylinder, though I would have preferred that it had gotten more attention. The makes us look good cylinder, it was definitely purely a pro-liberty move. It flushed the authoritarians out into the open. However, he failed to hit on the sustainability uh, cylinder, I guess, and eventually left New Hampshire. Uh, Sustainability and people leaving New Hampshire keeps coming up, which brings me to my next piece of activism on the totem pole. Uh, Mike Fisher, uh, he was the one that sort of got civil disobedience started in New Hampshire. So in a sense, not only was he doing textbook civil disobedience, but he was doing something kind of new. And I think for that reason, he delivered a a manicure without a license and was arrested for it. But I think for the the novelty of it, the textbook nature of it, that's why he got more attention than 
uh, most anything else we've ever done in New Hampshire. He was in every, really every major paper and uh, other media outlet. But again, you know, he he was a lot like Gandhi. He did a lot of charitable type of activism and so forth. But again, he didn't hit on the sustainability cylinder. He just couldn't, uh, I guess, make ends meet here. And away he went in around 2007, never to be heard from again. By the way, he did hit on the what I would call the follow-on cylinder because after he did his deed, uh, a bill was submitted at the state house to uh, try and change the manicuring laws. Uh, that first one failed, but eventually the laws were relaxed. I'm not sure how much that had to do with Fisher. LRN.FM, 24 hours of Liberty Radio every day. Now available on satellite, too, at sat.lrn.fm. That's what a satellite sounds like. Put it on your unlicensed station. Wear it in your hair. But above all, don't despair. The Liberty message is getting out. And right now, you're missing it. Or maybe you're not. But skip on over to LRN.FM. Feds don't want you to hear them.